Hi and welcome to my channel. I am Tammy Ozturk, the designer of BadBobbin.com and today I'm here to show you how I make my sensory marble maze. It can be made with different fabrics. It can be made with all cotton, which is what I've done here with double side. It could be done with flannels, um, fleece, thin fleece, microfiber, furs. It can be done with anything in the hoop 100% and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's in two hoopings. This design here, we put the marble in. It goes from one end, you just kind of push it through the maze that's been stitched out. And uh, once it gets all the way through, as we push this one through, the marble doesn't have to come out, but there is another end for the marble to come out. And so it goes in, start, and then there's a finish. And we're getting there. <laughs> and then here's the finish. So if you don't want to leave your marble out, there's a little side that you can pop in here and that's like, kind of like a pocket for it. The marble can stay inside so you don't lose them. So any size marble. This one here happens to work in the 11.8 um, by 7.9 hoop, which is that 300-200 hoop. Uh, the finished size of this is seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. I am working on smaller ones for smaller hoops as well, but this one here is the larger one for the larger hoop. And let's get started and see what we need to make the Sensory Marble Maze by BadBobbin.com. Okay, these are the uh, things we're going to need for the Marble Maze, the Sensory Marble Maze. And uh, I also print out from my program, my editing program, I can print out a, the pattern. So I do that and then I write my notes on it. So um, the PDF will have the sizes. So you'll cut your fabric eight and a half by eight and a half. You can use any fabric. You can use cotton fabric. You can use one side cotton, one side flannel. You can use a thin uh, fleece or a micro fleece. Uh, it, you can use many different fabrics. I just happen to have two different pieces of cotton and the one just happens to have like a gold type little thread metallic through it and a little butterfly, kind of a kind of matching. So I have my two pieces cut at eight and a half by eight and a half and this is done in a the um, what is this the eight by twelve hoop? Yeah, so this is the eight by twelve hoop. Um, I may uh, have to check on making it smaller for you, but I haven't yet. So this is going to be done in the 8x12 hoop and you'll just need uh, marbles. I happen to have a couple marbles. So it's a normal marble to go through the maze and just scissors to cut. And we're going to head on over to the machine and show you how this one is sewn out. Okay, we're at the machine now. I have ironed my two pieces so they're nice and flat. So I've got two pieces of the fabric ready to go. I have my 8 by 11 hoop and I've got tearaway in it. This will be the first hooping and then once we pull it out, we're going to do a second hooping. So I'm going to put the hoop in the machine and I'm going to run out the placement stitch. All right. So I ran my placement stitch. You can kind of see it. Sorry, it's in white on white, but it's a large stitch just to, to show you where to put it. And we're going to take our fabric and we're going to put good sides together. So right side and right side together. And we're going to place it and make sure that it's centered in our square. We've got enough room on each side and we'll press it down flat. You can tape it if you'd like. This is just going to run an outside stitch around it with the two openings for the, where the marble goes. And then uh, we're going to pull that out, cut it, and iron it. So this will be our first hooping, which is going to be our closure of the bag. Here we go. All right, so this is our first step. You'll stop at each step 
Um, that's why there's different color things. I'm going to tear this out and I'm going to show you right here on the machine what we do. I tear it out and I get rid of the tear away. So we got rid of the tear away. It's pretty easy. And there's going to be that uh, placement stitch, our box that we first did. And you can go ahead and cut those threads so they're not hanging out in there. Some of them will, will get caught by the other ones. Some aren't. So we're going to trim those a little bit so they won't be at our opening. Not a real big deal. So if you don't want to, you don't have to. You won't be seeing them anyways. but. They're on the edge, so where the opening is, I'm going to make sure it's cut and trimmed nicely on the opening. That's where we're going to put our marble. And we're also going to turn it through there. So where the camera angle is and how this is, me turning it may not be the best, so <laughs> we'll do, do my best here. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to trim it um, a quarter of an inch around and make sure that my corners are trimmed as well. So I'm going to trim it a quarter of an inch all the way around. Clip my corners at an angle. Angle. So we've cut all around it with a quarter of an inch and got rid of most of the threads that we don't want. And we're going to start to turn it. We're going to open up the one end where it is. I know it's kind of tight, but what you want to do is grab that first corner of where the opening is. You don't want to try to shove all of it through from the back side. You're going to start with that one corner and you'll push it through. Make sure that corner is really pushed through. And then what I'm going to do is I have my little chopstick here. Is I want to get the other corner of the opening, this corner here. I want to try to get this corner through first and then the rest will just follow. So I'm going to reach all the way in there with my finger. I'm going to gather it. And I'm going to get into that one corner. And I'm going to take my thumb and push it and get that corner through. So my thumb just pushed it through the opening. And I'm going to pull it through. So I've got both the openings through, or that both corners. And I'm just going to go ahead and start pushing it through and feeding it through. Pulling it out. And turning the sides as we go. A little tight, but it'll be worth it. And if you start to roll those sides, as they roll, they'll start turning. I'm going to pull it out. It starts to come out pretty easy. Instead of trying to shove it all through, it just kind of rolls through. And then I'm going to take my chopstick and I'm going to push out my corners. I want to make sure my corners are really good and pushed out. First corner. And my other corner here. You really want to get the, even in bags and stuff too, you really want to make sure your corners are pushed out. Everything just looks nicer when it's got a sharp corner. Okay, and I kind of take the chopstick a little bit and I kind of run it along the seam to kind of help give it a sharp, sharp seam. Kind of run it along there. There we go. And that's good. Now I'm going to go over to the iron. I won't take you with me, but I'm going to go to the iron. I'm going to iron this out really flat and make sure that all my edges and corners are sharp. 
and I'm going to hoop another piece of tear away in my hoop and I'll be right back and show you how to finish it. All right, we're back at the machine and I've rehooped another piece of uh, tear away and I've ironed it out nice and flat and made sure my edges were flat and I've marked where my openings are. Very important that we know where the openings are and this can be done um, either way, whichever way you're gonna, you wanna turn it. The design is, um, you need to have your openings on the left side to the top and the right side to the bottom. That's um, how the pattern is gonna sew out. So make sure we remember where their openings are. And our first thing we're gonna do is our placement stitch, our placement box, one more time. Okay, now here comes the tricky part because we really got to make sure that this is right in the middle of this box, exactly in the middle of this box, spaced properly, and that the corners are in properly so that when it does sew out, everything will be nice and even all the way around. So I'm gonna, I know that this is the way I want it, and I'm going to take these out. I know where the openings are. You can either tape it, but when you tape it, you really want to make sure that you're right at the edge of the fabric or um, you'll end up sewing through the tape, which is up to you if you want to sew through the tape and then pick out tape. Or you can use pins. I happen to have a couple of long um, needle pins, or not needle pins, but uh, straight pins that I'm going to use. And you can start off with taping it first if you'd like. And it's right inside, so you want to make sure, um, once I pin this, I'll go ahead and pull it out and show it to you. And when you pin it, you want to make sure you're right at the edge. And I kind of go off to the edge of the table. I know this is hard to show you this one. So I go off to the edge of the table so the pin comes to the bottom and then I reach underneath and kind of help push it back up. Middle, hard to show on film, sorry about that. And pushed it through. So the sides, like I said, I pinned it very, very close to the edge here. And also keep an eye while the next stitching is being done because it's going to do an outline stitch around the sides. Very careful when it gets to that part, then you can stop your machine, pull your pin, and let it go and continue. So very important. Whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera. To uh, be careful of that. And or you can, when you do the tape to keep it all down, I'll go ahead and tape the two edges to show as well. So when we tape our edges, Uh, like I said, it's up to you to let it just sew through the tape, or once it gets to that, we can go ahead and stop it, pull our tape, and then let it continue. So here we go. Hopefully everything's even in here. So it does take a little bit of time. You want to make sure that you're going to make everything even in there right inside that box so everything will sew out even. And we're going to put it back in the machine. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and stitch out the maze part. Cross our fingers. <laughs> here we go. I'm ready to stop it. Got lucky. So right here there's going to be a pin that's going to go through it. So right before it hit, I stopped it and I'm going to pull that pin out. So even on a single needle machine, just be ready to pull that pin out and you're good. And we'll just hold the corner with our fingers and continue.
All right, that's part of it. Now we're on the second part of sewing. Or the, yeah. close again. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that pin just to make sure. I'm going to hold the corner. Tape. We got lucky on that little piece. So yeah, you can see. We are finished. There we go. Remove our tape. On that one we got lucky. We were close. Where the pins are on the sides, you know, it's, it's a little offset, but it'll do what we need it to do. So it depends on how I placed it in there. And then we just gently tear our tape. I have some threads to cut here. And then this other piece of tape will come off. Gently pull it and we're good. And we'll go ahead and tear this out of our stabilizer. So the back side is going to have a stabilizer on it, but the sewing was pretty well done so that it's not going to be too, too hard to get this off. So we'll go back to the cutting table and finish it up and show you how it works. Meet the cutting table. Okay, we're back here and we're gonna go ahead and remove the stabilizer and trim and singe any of our threads we need to. There we go. And we have a couple little threads to clip. And I'm going to singe a little bit just to seal it. Same thing here. Singe it a little bit. There we go. So everything looks good. We don't have any other corners to singe. And there we go. Our little maze. You can do it in the dark thread if you want to. It's up to you. Leave it in the lighter thread and then we take our marble we start on the end either end you can start at and you're going to place your marble inside i have a glare from the sun i am so sorry about that okay i, I know it'll fit i don't have fingernails anymore and there we go the marble's inside and it's just a you know feel it around the maze it's a sensory, you wanna to try to get that marble through and that's the wrong way. Oh, let me go back this way and through. And you gotta make the marble go through and then we'll, uh, you can always mark one end or the other. And we're gonna come around and it pops right out. So that's our marble maze, sensory marble maze, and done in the hoop. If you enjoyed my video, give me a thumbs up. Yay! Subscribe, get more uh, notifications on new products and new items that we do. 
and tutorials of how we do them. And if you have any questions, any remarks, let me know down below. That would be great. And see what we can do, any requests. That would be great to have. So this is our marble maze, sensory marble maze, and it can be done in any fabric. It can be done in the flannel. It can be done in a uh, thin fleece as well. It would just be a little bit harder to uh, turn. And then when you do turn it, just when you can't iron it, so we've got to really make sure it's flat and the corners are pushed out and taped down. And if you have any other questions, give me a holler down below and let me know. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time.